Now the question is, can we find some useful sentences in this string of sequence that might represent useful proteins? Can I have a volunteer to help me out here? Let's have you on the end there. Thank you very much. What's your name? Kirsty. Kirsty. Right, Kirsty. If you'd like to come over here, what I want you to do is play a sort of word search game, okay? But it's going to be a very simple word search, so there's not going to be anything diagonally or backwards or any of those hard things. It's just going to be a sentence going across like you would read a book. And have a look at these letters and see if you can pick out an actual sentence that might make some sense. Let's have a look. What have we got? Make a, make a liver, make a liver cell, stop. That sounds quite good, doesn't it? Make a liver cell. Have we got any more there? Let's highlight that one, shall we? Make a liver cell. Have we got any more here? Make a heart cell. Make a, you're very quick at this. Have you seen this before? No. Well, let's highlight that one. Make a heart cell. So you've done something very clever here. You've found two genes. So the first gene is making our protein called make a liver cell. And the second gene is making our protein called make a heart cell. Now, what do you think the make a liver cell protein might be doing in the body? Making a liver. Making a liver. Absolutely. And what do you think the make a heart cell protein might be doing? Making a heart. Making a heart. Now, that sounds pretty useful, doesn't it? Kirsty, thank you so much for coming and showing us the way with that. <laughs> Different proteins are made in different cells so that cells can look and behave differently from one another to make complicated things like worms and us because of the DNA. But hang on a minute. If we go back to our worm camp, you see our worm's been very busy while we haven't been looking at it. Pete's been keeping score there and we've now had five cell divisions. It's been very busy. But we've seen, haven't we, that all of these cells have come from this first cell. So all of these cells will contain exactly the same DNA because DNA is duplicated each time a cell divides. So now we've got ourselves a problem, haven't we? All of our cells, no matter what their role is, contain exactly the same DNA. It's the same for any organism. Each species is defined by its complete DNA sequence, its genome. So what on earth is going on? How does this work? How do cells in us become different from one another? And we've seen how different they can be become. But how do they do this if they contain the same DNA? So to find out, scientists had to have another look at the code in even more depth. And it turns out that there's more to genes than just strings of codons. So let's have a look at our, our um, word search game again. What did Sarah here do to light up the sentence? In fact, let's go around the back here. Sarah, what did you do to switch to highlight these proteins? I just pushed a switch. So do it again. Off, on, off, on. You flicked a switch. Sarah flicked a switch. And that's exactly what happens in a cell. Genes can be switched on and off. They can make a protein or not. The make a heart cell protein, it's going to be switched on in our heart cells, but off in our liver cells. So we say that the make a heart cell gene is expressed in our heart cells and not expressed in our liver cells. And that makes sense, doesn't it? Because if your make a heart cell gene was expressed in your liver cells and you made the make a heart cell protein in your liver cells, then your liver cells might start beating. Do you think that would be a good idea? No, neither do I. So understanding this problem of gene expression is one of the key goals of molecular biology, even today.